Okay, hello and welcome back to the LRTV. Right, Wabco, that's probably a name you know, and you'll probably know this component here. It's uh, an ABS modulator. And on here, you probably won't know this, but this is made by the same company. This is a, a combined modulator and ECU. And you can see the plug blanks here. You have... Uh, a lot of equipment can be plugged into this. Where there are cables, you have ABS sensors. Well, this uh, is all relevant because ABS, EBS, okay, like a Defender, will have a very simple system, just a modulator ECU, whereas uh, vehicles like the D2, the D3, D4, Freelanders, they are absolutely packed out with ECUs. The ECUs do share information and they are sometimes dependent on each other. So if you have a wheel speed sensor go out, for instance, it will affect other systems and uh, it'll kick up a fault code. Maybe it'll keep the vehicle running, but it'll give you a fair amount of warning lights. Now we'll do something simple, and I'm going to relate to uh, trailers and Land Rovers here. You can plug in and get fault codes up and it'll give you an idea what's going on we've got four sensors that have got issues one of those uh, having a, a cable break or a short circuit um, three of those speed jumps well they're usually something to do with the exciter ring having issues uh, and also a power supply fault inside the ECU and that's a scary one now with uh, your vehicles of course not trailers you can um, interrogate for want of a better word your uh, abs system to see what it's talking to and how it's operating and obviously uh, things like AB, abs pump relay it's when you've uh, when you're using your, your foot uh, pedal the pump will start working um, you can check the battery voltage to make sure that you have power there and also you can check things like your wheel uh, speed sensors Front right, front left, the vehicle is stationary, so there's no input in there. And we're going to actually talk about wheel sensors, but I just want to show you that there's a lot going on with the, an ABS system, okay? And it, it's reading information from all over the vehicle, and it's also passing out information. However, if a wheel sensor is not working, um, this will give you issues because that's a bit of a piece of the puzzle that all these others um, can't um, read and it will throw up a fault code. So getting back to our uh, trailer, I think some of you have probably watched the video about the oscilloscope. Go and watch it. It's sort of interesting what I do at work. Um, yeah, we found a, a flatliner, as it were, which was no signal uh, from uh, the sensor. Found that the cable had been smashed. And, of course, uh, the cable was then changed, or the sensor and cable was changed, and we got a good signal. Now, I'm always using the oscilloscope because it, it, it provides me a hell of a lot of information quickly. It gets my job done quickly. And the plug socket at the front was uh, the power supply problem, and uh, we changed that. That was all right. That was just uh, corroded pins. So, all good and well. Now, exciter rings... Um, or reluctor rings as they're called, these excite a sensor. Now, there's all different types, and I think I've explained already, it depends on the size of the wheel how many teeth you actually have. On the Discovery 2, you'll see in the workshop manual somewhere, it will tell you it has a 60-tooth exciter ring. If the exciter ring is damaged anyway, it will um, misrepresent the information and the ECU will get upset. This is in good condition and it's not warped, which I'm happy about because these small tin ones, they get affected by heat so they can warp. Not so much on Land Rovers, of course, it's more um, physical damage that they can suffer. So showing you a drive shaft uh, from a Freelander, you can see the exciter ring on there. And the exciter ring for the front on a Defender is on the CV joint. Uh, as you can see, ABS one and a non-ABS one. So the uh, teeth are for the exciter. Um, to stimulate the sensor is there. Now on the rears on Defenders for instance, they like number 15 it is actually a, a rather large um, reluctor ring and that as you can see in the diagram is uh, exciting the uh, pole sensor. It's the same as what these trailers do and they are adjustable. 
This one, well, it, I couldn't move it one way, so I've knocked it out. I'll clean it up so I can then reset it when I put the hub on. Now, what I want to show you, some of you guys might know this. These are Wabco plugs, and uh, up to a certain generation, you can recognize them. And uh, this one here is uh, for the D1, and uh, the other one I have in my hand is for one of our HGV trailers. Oh, this is actually for disc brakes, it's not cranked. However, it is the same, and uh, basically it's a magnet in there with windings. And it's a, a small AC voltage generator, and you need the exciter ring to, to stimulate it. It produces its own current. Now, you, what you'll be... Um, just a useless bit of information, there are S and S Plus sensors. And S Plus has a little bit less resistance in it. You can use these in your Discovery Ones, of course, and they probably work out a little bit cheaper. Um, I can't see a part number on this. Um, however, if you know somebody in the trade, you could probably get one if you have a sensor fault on your Discovery. Um, the sensor, if you didn't know on your D1s, it will be here, and uh, and it's excited by the uh, CV. Um, joint, okay, the cutouts on the CV joint. And generally, the modulator and the ECU will only monitor the uh, system over five to seven miles per hour and above. Now, with the TD5 Discovery, it's a different kettle of fish, it's a different uh, wheel speed sensor. However, the plug is actually the same, and from what I understand, these are actually quite expensive. I'm not sure if they're adjustable or not. You'll have to tell me if you can actually adjust them in to get closer to the uh, exciter ring. Now, the exciter ring is in the one-piece hub, and that's pressed onto the bearing. There's nothing you can do about that. Right, so I've got a uh, Discovery TD5 axle. This is a rear one. I'm going to do a little bit of a test here, and I'll tell you what the socket's for in a minute. Uh, what I want to do is show you how to test quickly to see if your ABS sensor, or your wheel sensor, is working. Now, I don't know where they are on the rear, but on the front you uh, have them joined to the loom, which go to the ECU inside the vehicle on one side next to the, the modulator, or the pump. And, uh, yeah, I'll just show you that. That is Wabco. I wouldn't say it's one of my most favourite companies, but I do have a mug from them. Right, and then on the other side of the vehicle, for the other front sensor, which you can access, is down here by the brake servo, if you can see that just there. And you can unplug it and then test it with the, your multimeter if you like. Of course, I have cables from work, which is a little bit cheating, but you could get one out of an old Discovery, and you just need the plug end and a cable. Connected it up to a, a multimeter, and I'm going to do a resistance check, and that is it, basically. Resistance will show up here. ABS sensor in ohms is between 950 and 1,100 ohms, okay? That is the, the tolerance. If it's out, then the ABS sensor isn't in good condition at all. It's a simple check. It's not the best check, but 1.1. 1.07 kilo ohms, which, yeah, okay. Now, this is what you do if you would pin it out near the ECU. So you're reading the whole cable from the ECU right the way to the sensor. Whereas you can individually check the sensors um, on the plug. And you can see this, this will come up as um, something like 1.06 kilo ohms, which is within tolerance. Okay, so that's within tolerance. So, yeah, you'd Okay, that will tell you that it's uh, in good condition. The problem comes when you have something where the plug's ripped off like this and you have a, a break in the wire here. Not that it'll happen, it's just accidental as this axle's been moved about. And if you do have an ABS sensor problem, it could be the cable, like I said with the other one I showed you. And you can see with this one, actually, it has been damaged. So I, I don't even need to test this. I know that this has already been sheared inside. It's, uh, yeah, that's defunct. It is, it lives in a hard place. It's right next to the CV joint here on the, on the Discovery 2. And, of course, you can see how the cable's bent around, which is not brilliant. Um, so I would, on occasion, if you're doing a vehicle inspection, check to make sure the cables are all right. Now, with my um, tester, I can do quite a lot of things with this. It's a multimeter and an oscilloscope. One thing you can do is an AC voltage check. And you can see I have my socket here to uh, 
wind the wheel round. The faster it goes, the more voltage that you'll actually produce, and it's AC voltage. And uh, okay, that's gone up to 0.2 volts. Okay, now to me, numbers don't mean anything, and I, I don't like looking at numbers. I need uh, time over voltage so I can see what's going on. Dino here is uh, testing a, a wheel sensor he's just put in, and with turning this on the multimeter, I, I really don't understand what these figures are, even though they're set at AC voltage. Okay, and uh, I go back to this all the time. You can do frequency and you can also do a signature test, right? Well, the signature test is the oscilloscope one. This is the best way to go. Now, if, for instance, you're buying newer vehicles and you are going to do your own diagnostics, you need an oscilloscope now, simply by the fact that you need um, to see your, what your voltage is doing over time. Now, I'm selecting 500 milliseconds, which is half a second, and I'm going on to a decent voltage scale that I can read, not 50 volts, but 5 volts. I could even go down to 2, that would just give me a better picture on the uh, screen. And then I'm going to spin it up so you can see uh, in real time what the voltage is and, and what it's putting out. And this machine is actually um, it's more accurate. Okay, so I've got my settings and I'll give the wheel a spin. Okay, and uh, there's a socket on there to help me do it. This axle is actually going to be reconditioned. I just want to know what the ABS sensors are like, so I thought I'd show you how to test them. And then what I have here is actually a, uh, a very consistent signal. The, the teeth, there's no teeth missing. Uh, however, it does look as though it's not actually producing much voltage. The workshop manual, I can't find a voltage value for this at a certain speed. I, d I don't think they give you one. The, uh, a tester will be able to read the speed of the, uh, the wheel sensors if you take it for a test drive, for instance, but not with an oscilloscope, you're just getting a voltage uh, value. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just set the, these two to give me the maximum and minimum that that has given me, and then add them together, and this will give me the whole voltage uh, output. Okay, so uh, plus is 1.63, minus is 1.61, and the total is 0 0.324. It increases the faster you go, and it will get to a certain point. However, I would consider that um, not very good. However, Land Rover haven't given you any values, and I don't know whether this uh, the ECU would accept this. In the real world, what you'd do is take the value off a good wheel sensor, for instance, and uh, then you know where you're at when you test all the others. If they come well under value, then you know it's not going to work. Um, this multimeter is uh, very accurate, or the lab scope, should I say. That will give me readings of 0 0.001, for instance, and I can look at the differences uh, between the outputs of certain teeth. But, um, yeah, basically, this is how an oscilloscope works, all right? Now, with the pole sensors, wheel sensors, they need to be as close to the exciter ring as possible, so any adjustment that can be done push them in and you get a good signal like this. This one is with a new one that's 2.02 .02 volts at one meter per second and it's come out um, good and I'm happy with that. Whereas this one, okay, this is where we had an issue because the pole sensor was too far away from the exciter ring so it wasn't giving us much voltage. Now you can see the minimum maximum values so you're looking at 0 0.26 and 0 0.28. You add those together that doesn't make much at all. It's only just scraping past, okay, because the minimum is 0 0.5 volts at one meter per second on this system. So you can undersee what I, you can understand what I'm seeing when I use uh, an oscilloscope. What I'll have to do is how you can see the signal off a crankshaft sensor, and then you'll start to understand that this is now the norm for um, diagnostics or front door diagnostics. Right, I explained this in the last video, that if, for instance, your uh, exciter ring has a dent in it, right, you will actually lose the signal at a certain point, and that will come up with a fault code because the ECU is going, I can't see that, it's under a certain voltage, and you can see this very clearly in this picture here.
Um, some of you guys, you've got your uh, plug-in diagnostics tools, and, and what it is is, oh, yeah, okay, I can uh, do certain things on my vehicle. Great. I'm not knocking this at all because you get what you pay for with uh, all these diagnostic tools, but remember, they're third party. And the less you pay for it, the less you'll actually get to do, which is, uh, okay, some people are happy for it. They'll just go and turn a, 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 an emissions light off. But there is there is a hell of a lot more to diagnostics. And unfortunately, like the, the TD5, for instance, it is cram-packed with ECUs. So you, when you get a problem and you can't afford to pay somebody to do it, you've got to start to understand how to do front-door diagnostics. It's actually component testing. And... Um, I'll show you some more over time, okay?